Welcome back to Dylan of Sid Meier's Civilization IV Colonization, where we continue the conquest of the Americas of the Dutch. Four turns. Frigates take seven turns. Cannons don't actually receive defensive bonuses, oddly enough. That probably also includes settlement defense bonuses, so building some forts might not be a terrible idea in the major coastal cities to ward off amphibious assaults, but the mana wars can probably bombard us. And I don't think we can realistically build frigates until we can get a gun industry going. Let's go ahead and let's just build up some cannons. We actually need some more carpenters, so let's pick up another carpenter and then we can send the merchantman off. We've got another graduate of England's Folly. This one's going to be an elder statesman. Most of them are going to be elder statesmen now. Ben Franklin has offered to join our cause. He'll give us three Liberty Bells per printing press per newspaper. Now I'll go ahead and take them. This elder statesman I'm going to send over to Sushi City and will generate a boatload of extra food very rapidly. I should shoot up to 100% revolutionary support quite rapidly. Pretty much all the converted natives have been pushed down to this area down here to do fur trapping, since we literally don't have the skills to do fur trapping properly. I could educate them, I think, in the colleges and etc. However, educating them takes longer than a free colonist, and usually our slots are pretty full, Although sometimes there are available slots. We're not actually going to settle this fishing village. I don't see the point now. We have control of the land and none of the other colonies are really competitors, truly. With the construction of a printing press in Baco, we're then going to make a newspaper. We absolutely need more lumberjacks and more carpenters, but we need to keep this much money on hand to train more elder statesmen and we'll head on back. Alrighty. We've got a shipload of immigrants, one lumberjack goes to Denver, I think two of these carpenters are going to go to Hammerinville, and then one farmer is going to go up to Rum Central. We now produce enough political points from all of our small colonies that I'm actually going to switch them over to probably making newspapers or printing presses. Let's see if that's worthwhile. 15 turns, eh, maybe. Yeah, let's do it. Every single colony should get a printing press. We've got our first cannon built in the homeland. After that, what are we going to build? I say we go ahead and build a fort, why not? Alright, let's do some gun trading now, I think. Or let's think about things, actually. We chained up another elder statesman, which is wonderful. This one I might send up to Baco. Let's send it to Baco, yeah. I tell you what, I could probably use one more carpenter. Well, really, I need more carpenters all the time. And then we'll sell back. We're really struggling to make the money. Like, we're not struggling to make money, but the taxes are just a pain. We bought a fort in Remembrance. After this, we're probably going to want to go for more cannons. Yeah, let's build some more cannons. We can now get Paul Chomti to Maisenoub. It gives our gunpowder units formation and plus one movement for converted native. I don't care about this one. But I do like the formation bonus. Let's take him. That's fine. 51% taxes. Okay. This carpenter goes to England's Folly to increase our production at the university here, and then later on, probably cannons or frigates. This lumberjack is going to go to Denver as well. Interestingly enough, there's a Jesuit missionary up here, but I don't really have a Jagoon that can hunt him down. I could equip a scout and hunt him down, actually. Hold on. Petty criminal, get yourself some horses. You're going hunting. The Sioux only have 2,830 gold left, so... Oh, that's, well, I guess that's reasonable. I'll take that. They now want rum, which is actually a good choice. I won't be able to trade that much more, though. We got a boatload of money. I'm gonna pick up a boatload of farmers. Maybe more than that. I gotta check my colonies. Yeah, let's go with another one. Two of those are gonna get sent up to Rum Central. Well, one will go to Hammerinville, and then another one will go to Rum Central. One farmer will probably go to maybe Sushi City. More likely gamble. Although, now we'll sign up Sushi City. Beaverton finally has a coat factory. We're going to work on a warehouse expansion next. We actually really need storage in Beaverton. The elder statesman that just graduated is going to Denver. Denver will increase our production of silver as well as food and lumber. I actually need to build a silver mine right there. I should do that here pretty soon. Let me take care of that first. We've got a bunch of guns to sell and the Apache have some gold to give us. I will take that money, absolutely. Now this caravel is going to sail back to Europe and then join the colonies. Got a bunch of stuff to sell and we have a bunch of guns to buy. How many I need to buy I'll count in a second. 
Mm. That missionary almost certainly got away. I'm just going to pull this scout back. I don't see any reason in doing more hunting. So the number of guns that we need to buy is we need to buy six lots. And there's six lots. Well, really, we'll buy just as many as we can possibly afford. Which is actually going to be all of them. We spent an absolute crap ton of money on this, but we're going to make a bunch from the Incans. I've also learned exactly how many bells you need to produce in order to reach 100% rebel sentiment. It's four bells for every citizen. So Remembrance has 19 citizens at the moment. That means that we would have to produce 76 bells per turn. Right now we're producing 58 bells per turn with three statesmen and a newspaper as well as the textile mill giving us plus 25% bell production. What this means is that we could only ever reach maybe 78% revolutionary support. With the construction of another cannon in Remembrance, I think that we might want to actually do the frigate plan. Or we can go ahead and build a fortress. We could alternatively start building some of the other buildings just to get the increased Liberty Bell production from the factories. I think I'd like some frigates just to harass the Spanish at least to shut them down even more. So let's do that. We're not going to take John Jacob Astor for plus 50% fur production in all settlements. However, Samuel Adams increasing Liberty Bell production by the tax rate will actually take him for sure, absolutely. Vasco Nunez, the defense guy, has joined the French. I wonder if that means that they've actually set up a coastal colony again somewhere. They still have Cayenne and Guadalupe. Last time I played the lost footage, they founded Cayenne right here in the middle. So they might have another coastal city. I think it's about time we start making some guns, so we'll pick up a master gunsmith and maybe another master gunsmith. Yeah, let's do that. We'll bring them back. I had sent this carpenter to Hammerinville, but I need to actually send him over to Rum Central. We don't have enough spots for him in Hammerinville at the moment. Getting him to start working in Rum Central will make a lot of sense. More so once we get some lumber, of course. So we finished the University in England's Folly. Next up, we're going to knock out a printing press. We need to get our Liberty Bell production up there. And all of our guns have arrived in Remembrance to be sold. We're going to offload them onto our wagon trains. And these three wagon trains will head out to the Incans. We should make a crap ton of money, probably everything else they have left, and I'll find out if they regenerate money or not. And we're going to train up some more Elder Statesmen. Why not? We'll get another Elder Statesman. We got the printing house built in Gamble. Next up, we're gonna start working on more wagon trains. We just, we always need more wagon trains. We'll get the warehouse expansion done in Beaver 10 here pretty soon once we get the 10 tools. And we're of course gonna build a printing press here as well. Now, Alexander von Humboldt offers to give us plus 50% faster production of college and universities. We don't need this. We're not going to accept him. And we offloaded a bunch of goods. To replace those, we're going to grab ourselves, I think, a master tobacconist. Yeah, let's grab a Master Tobacconist. That leaves us with 748. We'll come back as is. I'm actually going to need some more guns for the frigate, but first I think I'd like to sell the guns we have on hand. This Elder Statesman that we just generated is going to go up to Hammerinville and start the Liberty Bell production there. We got ourselves another converted native from the Incan villages. This one, I might just harvest lumber using. Actually, let's send him over to Glitter Hill to fish the crabs instead. We always need more statesmen, so that's what we're going to pick. Basically, my idea is to have an elder statesman at least one in almost every colony. After the printing press, we can't actually finish it without some more tools. We're probably going to just go ahead and build a fort here in England's Folly. We've got the newspaper in Baco. Next up might be a warehouse expansion. I think the warehouse expansion makes the most sense. Eli Whitney has offered to join our cause. That's plus 50% cotton in all settlements. I don't need that. Our caravel arrived from the west, but we're just going to send him on back to the east to join the colonies and do some shipping. Now, Patrick Henry giving us plus three Liberty Bells for every town hall. We will take him, absolutely. This, this elder statesman is going to go to Beaverton. We got our gunsmiths off the boat in remembrance. Those gunsmiths, I'm wondering if I should set them up here. Probably going to be most efficient just to have them working in Remembrance producing guns. So let's get them going. There we go, we're making 16 guns per turn. And thus begins our own domestic arms industry. The lumber mill in Hammerville is done. We're going to go ahead and knock out the warehouse. And then after that we might go up to uh, working on the blacksmith shop. 
let's sell a bunch of goods and let's consider buying some more people. I think I'm going to go ahead and buy some more gunsmiths as well as another blacksmith. We produce a ton of ore, I can supply both of them. We also produce quite a bit of ore just from our colony squares because we have quite a few colonies on hills. We'll have to 52% taxes, that's completely fine. Actually, while well, this is only a 1% tax increase, holding a guns party doesn't make sense. I'm kind of at the point of no longer buying guns from Europe, so we might actually keep this in reserve for later on to prevent a larger tax increase. Got another French caravel to sink, always wonderful. I've actually got enough horses now that I can do the arming my colonists as scouts thing to move them around from colony to colony faster. I just gotta remind myself to do it. And it doesn't take a turn to equip them. So they can just move all the way down to Bako. And instead of it taking one turn to get to the marsh here, one turn to get to Bako and then not being able to join, they should be able to join on the next turn. Yeah, they can't join this turn, but they can join but they can join next turn. And that saves one turn. So we can't finish the frigate quite yet until we have the guns on hand. What we're gonna do in Remembrance is instead build a magazine to increase our gun production. We got the warehouse built in Hammerinville. Now we want to probably immediately start working on the blacksmith shop. I think that makes the most sense. For some reason, this caravel got sent all the way to the north. Let's see if I can send it back to Europe. Well, I can't do that. I'm just going to have to sail it down all the way, aren't I? That sucks, but it is what it is. There's a Spanish caravel that wants to hide inside Isabella. We'll just wait for him to come on out and then say hello. We're going to start having more issues with the Sioux because although we have the mutual military struggle giving us neutral with Sitting Bull, he has minus four from way of life threatening to ours. We're going to start taking his land accidentally once Rum Central starts to grow because generating Liberty Bells pushes your borders out. And this is Sioux land and when they lose it, we can't pay them for it because if our border is growing, they just get upset. And there's literally nothing I can do about that. We've got that fort in England's Folly. Next up is going to be a newspaper as soon as humanly possible. And then we've got a printing press in Sushi City, which I'm extremely happy about. A newspaper is not going to be worth it here. We'd be much better off simply building more political points instead, I believe. There's nothing else that we need here. So political points, it is. Or well, we might actually want to build some different points. I'll have to think about what founding fathers I'd like. And with a printing press in Beaverton, a newspaper here actually does make sense. Nothing else is really necessary, so we'll go for a newspaper. Oh, Lewis and Clark, that's amazing. So we had him at about, I think, 7,000 points. So we're generating maybe 3,000 political points every single turn. half price Pioneer equipment is wonderful. I wish I had been in position to have my Pioneers not working at the moment so that I could re-equip them for half price. But unfortunately, if I unequip my Pioneers now, I'll get half the tools I would have gotten beforehand. But the big deal is this plus one movement for wagon trains. We constantly need more wagon trains because we're constantly producing more and more goods. This plus one movement is going to help make everything way, way more efficient. Offload some more goods. Let's pick up. I'm actually kind of thinking that we're going to need a secondary tobacco rolling facility. But we also need some carpenters. So I need to analyze which one's going to make more sense. We sank the caravel. Looks like we got some coats out of it. 200 coats. Wonderful. We'll immediately sell back to Europe with that booty. First arm stealing wagon chain has arrived in the Incan village. So let's enter trade negotiations. Their gold has not gone back up. So we're probably not going to get a whole lot of money from them. Well, we can't do more than maybe three trades with them total. They'll give us 3,654 gold for 200 guns. That is a fantastic number, I'll take that. Now, they're down to 9,840. We can only do the two more trades for full price, for guns at least, and then maybe a lower price for other guns. I don't know how the Aztecs got more money. And trade number two. Not as much money, but still pretty good, I'll take it. All right, and if I look at my colonies, I'd say that I'm gonna need five carpenters, so I'll take five carpenters. Very good. After that, we're probably going to need more farmers. However, fishermen are about as useful, and they don't require any extra construction. Alright, so we're going to pick up three more fishermen. 
Carpenters go on the merchant man immediately. They get sent back. We've got plenty more spots on the merchant man coming in, but we are kind of reaching a point where we might want some more shipping vessels. We could also just build the shipping vessels. The merchant man is 1500. It costs only 60 tools to build, plus the hammers, but the hammers aren't as valuable as the tools. That means that even if we bought the tools, it would cost us 180 gold to effectively build a merchantman minus, you know, lumber costs, etc. that we don't actually pay for. And we have such a high production city in Remembrance that we're better off just building our own ships now. So we're not going to do that. It's interesting that you can't hire a Jesuit priest. There's one in the immigration pool, but that's a lot of money. And we're kind of at the point where I'm not sure that it would pay itself back by the time we win. I'm thinking what else we're going to need is another lumberjack, maybe two lumberjacks, and some more blacksmiths. We're going to need a second tool city. I was thinking about setting it up right down here. We could also do with that third set of tobacconists, well, second set of tobacconists, I mean, and set them up in England's Folly, because we need more Liberty Bell increasing buildings here, and the factories are really nice. I would set it up in Remembrance, but the issue is that you need four Liberty Bells to convert one colonist to 100%. That means that at the moment we're producing enough Liberty Bells in Remembrance to reach 100% on 20 colonists, which is exactly as big as we are right now. And we're of course going to get more Liberty Bells as we get higher tax rate to increase our Liberty Bells. And there's a couple more Founding Fathers that we should have access to, like John Jay gives plus 25% Liberty Bell production in all settlements. We can get some more from Washington Irving, but not a whole lot. And then some from Alexis de Tocqueville, but not a whole lot. We've gotten most of the Liberty Bell production improvement founding fathers. We are going to need some more ore miners here pretty soon. So I need to get another ore miner for sure. So we'll grab an ore miner as well as a lumberjack. We'll grab another farmer, and I think we'll hold right there to train some statesmen in the meantime. This is a big population surge just from selling to the Incans. It's a temporary thing. We're going to go back down to like about two colonists every turn in growth. Of course, that accelerates faster and faster as we produce more goods. All right, the warehouse expansion will be done in Baco once we have the tools on hand. I just got to ship them in. I don't think there's much else that I would like to get here. I'm just going to purchase the tobacconist because I want to reserve my trained colonists to become statesmen. So we're just going to build maybe political points here. Let's do that temporarily. I'll take a look at the founding fathers finally and see if I want to change which ones I want to build. Got the printing press in Glitter Hill. Next up is going to be a dock actually. And then a printing press in Anchorage. A dock would be nice here as well. A printing press in Ontario. A stockade might be sensible because our borders are going to get pushed out from here and the Incans are going to get a little bit upset. So we might end up fighting with them a little bit. Really, it's mostly just training for our people and our army. It's not a terrible thing. We actually need a warehouse here. We keep running out of storage space, so let's build that. Taxes up to 54%. I will actually accept this. I'm totally cool with that. You give me more tax rate, I get more Liberty Bells. Thank you. You know what? I actually need more wagon trains. I'm going to have Bako build some more wagon trains. I like to keep my goods as perfectly shipped as humanly possible. So our gunsmith and blacksmith have arrived. There's not really anywhere for the gunsmith to go. There aren't any available workplaces. All of our workplaces in Hammer and Ville are going to be full for the next four turns. I might as well put the blacksmith to work here in Remembrance. And the gunsmith, he's just going to have to kind of wait and do something else in the meantime. Such as rolling some cigars. That does reduce our goods production by 3% though as well. But we're going to need him here anyway, so it's okay. Or better yet, making some tools. Let's do that instead. We have a bunch of ore just sitting around the colonies in various places. I haven't sold it just because I want to keep it on hand for tool and gun production. And it doesn't sell for very much money, only three. In contrast, tobacco is five and sugar is six. And those are raw goods. Third set of guns getting sold for... Never mind. Uh -huh. Hold on. I don't think I want to take that price. We bought them for like eight each, which means that 
he wants to sell us for about the same as we bought them for. Even though this is a gun wanting village, I think he just has too many on hand. So we're going to bring those back, those are valuable to us in making frigates and soldiers. Uh, finally we get Ethan Allen giving us free Ranger 1 and Mountaineer 1, we absolutely must take that. Yeah, we got a boatload of goods to send off, the privateer is just going to get sent back as is to the east, hopefully it does not get sunk because he only has 1.4 strength remaining. Merchant Man's going to sell off his goods, we're going to load up the carpenter, and then I'll take the lumberjack, the ore miner, and a fisherman, send them off as is, and these guys are just going to have to wait. I wouldn't mind some of these religious founding fathers. If we get better relations with the natives, we might be able to keep them from going to war with us. We don't want to attack them at this point. Taking those settlements basically requires cannons. And we've armed most of them at this point. <laughs> so fighting them would be quite a bit harder than usual. We might want to switch our colonies that are building political points over to making religious points. And we might want to take the time to set up some firebrand preachers just to get those points. Actually, we're going to need some more military points in not too long. I got Ethan Allen. Next up, I'd want to get Dom Pedro. And we're actually almost 2,000 military points short of getting Dom Pedro. We could get him by attacking the natives, or we could get him by attacking the Spanish. Or, of course, finishing off the French as well. Marquis de Lafayette increasing gun production by the tax rate is also nice. Both of those I'd like to get, which means that we'd need significantly more military points. So I think we'll just switch the colonies from political points to military points to ensure that we get these guys. Oh, maybe we won't actually take the native land. Ontario's borders just expanded, but they didn't expand onto the Incan lands. They might generate enough culture that we can beat them, but the fact that we have any culture in their lands probably upsets them. Not yet, no, not yet. Our four colonists have arrived in Remembrance, so we're going to get them sent off on their way here pretty soon. One of them is going to get equipped with some horses so that he can more effectively move up to Hammerinville. Another one is going to get some horses as well to go up to Rum Central. One of them is going to walk to Gamble. And the other one, we'll probably send him over to... We can maybe do Bako, but Bako is kind of done with building things. We could also turn Bako into a blacksmith area as well. We just have to ship even more food into it, but I'm not sure how good of an idea that is. Uh, this carpenter is going to go down to England's Folly to join them. Uh, another tax raise to 57%, I'll absolutely take that, thank you so much. We got ourselves two more Elder Statesmen trained up, as well as a printing press in Denver. Now in Denver, I think we want to get a warehouse built. We do sometimes run out of storage here in Denver. A wagon train built in Baco thing. With a wagon train built in Baco, I think I want to switch over to building military points. And then with a lumber mill built in Rum Central, we want to build a rum distillery next. And we we'll want to start getting ourselves more rum distillers up there. I think one more rum distiller, because we don't have that much sugar production. And now we have Cyrus McCormick offering to join our cause. Accepting him gives us plus one food on plots of two food and plus 50% sugar in all settlements, which will actually help run Central out quite a bit. I'll absolutely take him, 100%. And then we have a bunch of goods to sell, a bunch of people to get onto the ship, and a bunch of money on hand too. We'll have to think about what we want to buy. We definitely want to buy another Master Distiller, so let's buy him now. Pick him up. And let's go ahead, let's get those Master Tobacconists that I was talking about and get them rolling as well. The king continues to add more and more troops to the uh, revolutionary force. He's up to 71 regulars, 42 regular jacoons, 26 RD, and 25 warships. But if we train our military properly, we should be able to just slaughter these dudes left and right. Hopefully. And this elder statesman is going to get sent down to Beaverton using some horses to save one turn of movement. And this elder statesman is going to quit with some horses to head on up to Hammer and Ville to get them rolling even faster. Our privateer is back and he has a promotion so we're gonna give him veteran four and we'll saw him a little bit closer to just scare the Spanish. Well, to keep an eye on them, I mean, and then we'll heal in place. 
he'll actually heal an extra 10% faster in neutral lands because of Veteran 4. Our Fisherman, Carpenter, Lumberjack, and Ore Miner have arrived from Europe. The Ore Miner is going to get sent up to Hammerinville, and all of them are going to use horses to make the trip faster. Fisherman gets sent over to Sushi City. Lumberjack is going to get sent to Bako, as well as the Expert Carpenter I think will get sent to Bako. Uh, let's send this Expert Carpenter over to Beaverton instead. Yeah, our goods production is up so far that we're beginning to kind of hit storage limits from time to time in Remembrance. So we need some more shipping vessels to send goods back to Europe faster and faster. The magazine Remembrance will be done once I ship some tools in here. I might consider buying more tools from Europe. They are super cheap. But what I want to do next is actually work on a merchantman. We need some more actual shipping vessels. And we got the newspaper in England's Folly, which is fantastic. We might want to build a dry dock here. We don't really need anything else. I was talking about building a tobacconist shop, actually. Let's build a tobacconist shop. We'll build this as the secondary cigar rolling facility. Cigar Town 2.0 will just be a cigar harvesting facility. Which does remind me that I need to move some tobacco planters from Baco over to Remembrance. So that we can train the tobacco planters once we need them. We got the blacksmith shop in Hammerinville done. We're going to immediately start working towards the iron works to increase our production of tools and increase our efficiency at producing those tools. And thank you for the tax increase, King. We're not going to boycott cigars. We make too much money. It looks like Sushi City is the first city to reach 100% revolutionary support, which means that they're getting 50% more goods. And we do nothing but grow food here. So we're getting 38 food per turn. Basically how the scout thing works is that we centralize horses in Remembrance in England's Folly. We equip the scouts in Remembrance, push them out, and the horses get dropped off and then brought back from the outlying colonies by our wagon trains. I will say it's a little unfortunate that uh, if you move beyond two spaces as a scout and then you unequip the colonists from being a scout, they lose all their remaining movement. You can't have them join the colony. So it doesn't always work 100%. If you're three tiles away, you might as well just walk at that point because it's the same amount of time. But if you're, say, four tiles away, it is better to do the scout thing. And I need to go ahead and pull one of these expert tobacco planters out and send them over to Remembrance. Not keeping them in the city will make training them a little bit more expensive, but I don't really have space for them in Remembrance. And we're not going to be training that many. We're going to be training like one, two three more probably. Our guns have arrived back from the Incan village. We're going to offload most of them, equip the petty criminal that's been standing here forever with some guns. He's now a fantastic soldier with Mountaineer 1, Ranger 1, Settlement Attack, well Grenadier 1, and Formation 1. Once we get Don Pedro they'll be even more effective automatically. Yeah we're going to buy some more tools I think and then set up the secondary tool production facility ASAP. I'm going to station some of these troops over in the western colonies. I had no fear of the Incans, but I'm now a little bit concerned that we're going to get attacked by them eventually. I'm also going to ensure that Hammerinville is protected as well by a proper soldier. You know, my shipping lanes are hurting badly enough that I think I need to actually go ahead and buy a merchantman. It is better for us to build them, but it does take a while. I think we'll be good. We want to save money for specifically buying the lower level specialties. I'm going to need more of those here pretty soon, especially blacksmiths and gunsmiths and ore miners, of course. The tobacconist shop will be done in England's Folly not too long. We're going to start building a dry dock next. And John Jay is offering plus 25% Liberty Bells in all settlements. We absolutely want him. We'll take him. Got some goods to unload. Now, this time, we're going to just get a bunch of tools and bring those back. The tools we can convert into buildings and ships. We built a dock in Glitter Hill. After that, I think we're just going to have Glitter Hill focus on probably just some military points. Let's go with that. And we would build a rum distillery, but we are lacking tools. Our tool production is just not where it needs to be quite yet, but we'll get there pretty soon. Instead, we're going to work on a printing press next. That does, of course, require more tools, though. <laughs> we have a gigantic boatload of colonists to send around. The tobacconists that I've gotten, two of them, are going to get sent down to England's Folly. Mr. Rum Distiller is going to make his way up towards Rum Central. 
we got a fisherman to send to Beaverton. And another fisherman that's going to make his way down to Glitter Hill. And the expert farmer is going to head on over to Denver to produce more food. I think that's the best use of him nearby. I'd love to hear any feedback you have about the video in the comments below. I'm always looking to improve. If you enjoyed the video, giving it a like would help the video to reach other people that might also enjoy the video. If you'd like to see more, you can always subscribe. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.